Today's video was sponsored by Rizik Yali, a true patriot and a Kenyan nationalist at heart. Yesterday I did a video where I alluded that the exact same conditions, preconditions rather, that we saw the DP going through, which gave us a very strong hint that his boss Uru Kenyatta will not support him, are the exact same preconditions we are seeing Rigadi Gashagwa going through. And this time around it's not about support because it's premature, this time around it's about him being picked as a deputy. Is William Ruto likely to keep Rigadi Gashagwa as his deputy in 2027? I alluded that based on the conditions we are seeing today and what we saw in the past, the answer is no. Now, in this video, I want us to look into what are the ways forward for DP Rigadi Gashagwa, considering the disrespect we are seeing him receive from junior officers in Kenya Kwanza, some of whom are even unelected leaders, never been an MP, MCA, governor, nothing. They are just Mtuwa Mkono, but they are also lecturing him. What is the way forward? Now, in my opinion, there is two options for DP Rigadi Gashagwa. The first option is to conform and conform quickly. And what exactly do I suggest he does in this effort to conform? Ignore the disrespect. That is all he has to do. Ignore the disrespect. The problem for DP Rigadi Gashagwa is that he doesn't know how to ignore anything. He always speaks his mind and he speaks his truth. And historically, we all know that people who say the truth People don't like them at all. Even today you come out to expose scandal XYZ in government and you're doing it every six months or so. They eat, you expose them. They eat, you expose them. They will send hired thugs. If Jesus, the son of God, spoke the truth to the Pharisees and they made sure that he was crucified, why would D.P. Rigadi Gashagwa be an exception? We are seeing him being targeted politically because when Kenya Kwanza is saying we are pushing this finance bill, he's saying wawache kutapikia wanainchi. You see what I mean? So the DP, all he has to do is ignore. If he ignores all this, no one will touch him. I'll give you a good example of DP William Ruto at the time. There is a point in time when the deputy president, who is a member of the National Security Council, a permanent member, he went to attend that meeting. He was a bit late because of one or two reasons. He find Uru Kenyatta is present. Fred Matiangi is present. Kibicho is present. All the big bosses, including the IG at the time, Hilary Mutiambai, was present. But DP William Ruto was told to go back. How does that happen? It makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. But the DP decided to keep quiet. He contested for the presidency. He won. And then we heard about that story. President Ruto told that story at the right time. He didn't say it prematurely. Because the moment he says such things, now he's banned permanently from the NSC. He's targeted and so on and so forth. He only rejected the BBI, but a bulk of the disrespect he went through, he kept it to himself. Now the DP can play the long game. Ignore when Farouk Kibet speaks. Ignore when Kimani Ishungwa or other people from your own region, including his own MP from Madira, doesn't like him. Just ignore. When you ignore people, they quickly find other targets. At one point, Raila was the target of Kenya Kwanza. He's now gone to AU. Someone has to be a target. The target is now Rigadi. If Rigadi removes himself as a target, somebody else will be a target. It always has to be somebody. That is how politicians are and they behave, including even the other day, we saw the MP Kagombe saying that the Gen Zs are being funded by Illuminati because he simply can't find a target. So he had to assign somebody and it was Illuminati. So the DP needs to remove himself as a target. And when he does that, the powers of the day will find him tolerable. The way they find Mudavadi tolerable. Mudavadi won't expose anything in government. He won't question anything in government. He likely won't even contribute anything to government. He is somebody who will be told to do this, he'll do it quietly. So if the DP plays a fool, there is a high chance he can be picked as President Ruto's deputy once more in 2027. And he'll have outwitted those who are salivating that seat. We have uh, Anwai Guru who is coming to her final term. And that is why she's speaking a very contrasting voice to Rigadi Gashagwa. She is saying that this guy is not popular. The president likes me. I am the big boss in the council of governors. So it is likely I might be picked. So the DP needs to play the long game. That's the first option he has. Now the second option, assuming we have reached the point of no return, whereby 
the dp cannot work with the president or even worse the president cannot work with him because usually it's not the dp who picks the president it's the president who picks his dp ahead of an election if it reaches the point where the president cannot work with dp rigathi the only other viable option for rigathi gashagua is to resign from politics and become a private citizen and be condemned by history as a troublemaker because history is written by winners not losers If the president dumps Gashagwa and wins re-election, Gashagwa will forever be branded as the problem by people like Moses Kuria, Kuria Kimani, Kimani Ishungwa, and so on and so forth. But if the DP seeks to have vindication, he will have to vie himself. And if he is to vie, there is no other option for him other than the Akamba community. Reason being, the Akamba community and the Kikuyu community, they are cousins. Even the language is sort of similar. On top of that, they already have political history. The same way the Kikuyu and Kalenjins have had history before, from the days of Mze Kenyatta and Moi, you know? Now again we had Uru Kenyatta and William Ruto. Again we have had William Ruto and Rigathi Gashagwa. The same way the Kikuyus have history with the Kalenjins, they also have history with Kambas, however small it may be. In 2007, Kalonzo Musyoka deputized Kibaki. Who is to say that the same Kalonzo Musyoka cannot work with DP Rigathi Gashagwa? It is possible. The only question, the hard question for them is this. Who is going to deputize who? Kalonzo believes he's more superior and senior to Rigathi Gashagwa because he did it years ago. He's not new to politics like Rigathi Gashagwa. This is the seventh year for Rigathi Gashagwa in active politics as an elected leader. Everything else has been behind the scenes. Kalonzo has done it for years, so he'll feel I am the one to go for presidency. Rigathi should continue deputizing me the way he deputized President Ruto. But knowing Rigathi Gashagwa is very ambitious. He is not going to deputize anybody other than President Ruto. He is either Ruto's deputy for another term or his his own man with his own deputy. Who will deputize who? That's the only question there. But a combination of Gashagwa and Kalonzo Musyoka, I am not convinced it will win, but it will give the president a run for his money. The only challenge I see for this alliance is that they have no footing in the coastal region. They have no footing in northern Kenya. The only way they can get that credibility is by borrowing the legitimacy of Raila Odinga. Raila Odinga if he injects his weight behind them, if ODM comes in behind them, then they will surely win. We will find ourselves in a situation whereby ODM is the one to decide the election will go the side of the president or his deputy or which way will it go? Those are the unique situations that are before us. Now of course if the DP stops working with the president or the president stops working with him, the president's option moving forward is very slim and limited. His only option will be Musalia Mudavadi because mathematically lawyers are the only community which come very close to Mlima Kenya in terms of numbers. So those are the options which are forward. The DP either ajifanye mjinga apitie hiyo mabaya yote mradi apate his second term. From then on he'll be his own man and say what he wants to say the way DP Ruto used to go against BBI in public. Or the second option, he teams up with Kalonzo Musyoka and hopefully ODM and other parties and he's able to launch a serious campaign. Those are the only options before us guys, but do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. So in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula, hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to. All right guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.